Hello friends, this video on P-Block Elements Part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's talk about the chemical properties now. In chemical properties, we'll talk about reaction with air. We'll talk about the reaction with hydrides, oxides, hydroxide. We'll talk about the aqueous solutions. We'll talk about the reaction with acids. We'll talk about the reaction with base. And we'll also talk about halides. Let's start with the reaction with air. The first property says that the boron is unreacted in crystalline form. But in amorphous form, it is on heating, it forms B2O3. So if you see, there are two forms of boron. One is the amorphous, one is the crystalline. The amorphous looks like this, and the crystalline looks like this. So this guy is unreactive. But this guy, if you see, right, it is just kept outside, it's unreactive. This guy is kept in a glass in the bottle because it's really reactive. And once you heat you know, air, it gives B2O3. So the reaction goes like this you have boron, you react with oxygen. We get B2O3. We write a balanced reaction for this. This is the reaction I have. The second one is the aluminium. Boron is done. For aluminium, it forms a thin layer of oxide on the surface which protects the metal from further attacks. So if you react with oxygen, what happens is the aluminium itself forms a quick aluminium oxide coating and which helps uh, which protects aluminium from further corrosion. And that's why it is used in metal also, in, in utensils also, because it, it reacts, but the moment it reacts, it forms a layer and that layer itself is protective. So, with the reactions like this, we have aluminium, you react with oxygen, you give A and B. This is the balanced reaction. Right? So, Al2O3 is my predictive coating. Correct? With dinitrogen at high temperature, aluminium and boron reacts to form nitrites. We'll see the reaction here. So I have boron plus nitrogen, which gives Bn. I have aluminium. Like this B only, and it has to be four boron. This is aluminium plus nitrogen, it gives Al. This is my reaction. So boron and aluminium and react with nitrogen gives boron nitride and aluminium nitride. And this boron trioxide is acidic in nature. Please note it's acidic in nature. And this is the shape of boron nitride and this is the shape of aluminium nitride. This is the shape of boron and aluminium nitride. Let's talk about the gallium also. This is aluminium and gallium, they are amphoteric. That means they react with acid and base both. And this can be proven from various reactions. You can see the aluminum reacts with uh, sodium hydroxide, aluminum reacts with uh, dilute sulfuric acid, similarly with gallium and uh, gallium also. So this, this is something which we'll study in the next few slides also, where we'll see the reaction of aluminum with uh, base in acid. The oxides of indium and thallium, these are acidic in nature. Sorry, basic in nature. These are basic, these are amphoteric, and this is We'll discuss uh, more about this also in the next two slides. We'll discuss about the oxides nature. So the we'll talk about the increasing nature of uh, uh, increasing basic nature of the oxides, where we'll see that the boron oxide, since it is uh, non-metal or metal, it's acidic, then it, it becomes amphoteric and becomes basic. Right? So if you don't understand these three points, just hold on, be patient. I'll I'll touch upon these three in the next two slides. Let's talk about the hydride reaction with hydrogen. So boron typically they don't react with hydrogen directly, but we can find the, the hydrides exist in this form MS3 by indirect reaction because they don't react with hydrogen. For example, you have this boron and you react with hydrogen, there will not be any reaction. Right? But if you react, you can produce this uh, hydride indirectly. You can take this boron halide. Or this boron fluoride here, you react with sodium hydride 450 Kelvin, and you get this B2A6. And the boron hydrides are called boranes. We will study more about this boranes. And B2A6 is the simplest hydride, and it is pretty unstable actually. This is unstable, but it is the simplest boron hydride. It's called borane. Correct. The next we'll take aluminium. Aluminium also forms ALS3. It is colorless solid. It is solid because it has a structure and because of this AL 
H bridge, it is solid. So this is my aluminium and my hydrogens here. So it forms the bridge actually, and because of the bridge structure, it is solid. As I told the the whether it is solid, liquid, or gas, or what is the melting and boiling point, those things depend a lot on the structure, right? So if it has ALH AL bridge, and because of this, it is colorless solid. Aluminium also forms a complex hydride. LiAlH1 is a very strong reducing agent. It's very used widely in the industry. So we'll discuss this and how to form this uh, complex hydride. So what we do is we, you take lithium hydride and you react with uh, aluminium chloride in ether. You get lithium aluminium hydride and you get lithium chloride also. You can balance this if you want. So this is a very strong reducing agent, right? So lithium aluminum has very strong reducing agent. Also, gallium also forms this complex hydride, LiGH4. Correct. And these hydrides are weak acids. They are weak acids. For example, why weak acid? Uh, weak Lewis acids. What are Lewis acids? So Lewis acids are nothing but the one which accepts lone pair. I'll write here. Lewis acid and nothing but which accept lone pair. Right? This is the definition we have studied in the uh, in the first few chapters. It accepts lone pair. So let's react this ammonia. Let's suppose this is a base with uh, ALH3. So what will happen is this becomes ALH3. Why? Because this guy is a Lewis acid and accepts the lone pair. This ammonia has a lone pair, right? So this guy, if you see the reaction, right? Ammonia structure, this is the structure of ammonia. It has a lone pair. And ALH3, if you see, this is the ammonia hydride structure. It's a low lone pair. So it will accept this lone pair and it will form this. Okay? So if you see, ammonium has how many electrons? Six electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six. It needs eight electrons to be happy, so it will accept the lone pair from ammonia, and they, thus they, they are called Lewis acids, and they are very weak Lewis acid. Let's talk about the oxides and hydroxides. The statement says that the nature of oxides and hydroxides turn more basic as we go down the group. So this, we go down the group, it becomes more basic. The question is why? Before we understand this, let's take an example. You see, the boron trioxide is acidic. Oxides are acid. Aluminium and gallium oxides are amphoteric. Amphoteric. And then if you see the indium and thallium oxides are basic. And thus this proves that the moment you go down, it becomes basic. But the question is why? The reason I will write here. See, the moment you go down, what happens is the size increase. Right? The go down. As we go down, size increase. Size increase that means ionization energy decrease because it's easy to pluck electron, right? I decrease, right? Easy to pluck electron. Correct. See. We boron in plus state or aluminium in plus state or gallium in plus state or indium in plus state. Which one is easier? These guys, these guys can become easily in plus states, right? Then these guys, then these guys. Why? Because the size is increasing, so they can easily lose electron and they can always become metal plus ions. Correct. So since they can easily become M plus ion easily. become M plus ion easily as we go down the group, right? So the strength of MOH or MO bond strength decrease like this. Correct. So if I have some MOH, I'll have more M plus and OH minus now. Correct? Because as we go down the group, as we go down the group, this forms easily. And since this M plus forms easily, I have more OH minus ions in the solution. Since I have more OH minus ions in the solution, the 
basic initial increase. So example, if you see, if we talk about aluminum hydroxide, let's take indium hydroxide. So if you see, aluminum has tendency to form Al plus 3, but indium has more tendency to form this. So if you see these guys, they'll have more hydroxide ions here. Correct? And thus, this is more basic. So as we go down the size increase, the tendency to form M plus ions increase because the electron ionization energy decrease. And since M plus ions tendency to form increase, it, the tendency to form M plus ion increase, that means the strength of MOH bond decrease. Since the strength of MOH bond decrease, it has more M plus and OH minus ion solution. Since more OH minus ion solution, that means more basic in nature. Correct. Let's talk about the reaction assets. So here, here we will talk more about the reaction of boron and aluminium only. So boron, if you see, they, does not react with acids at room temperature. Boron, it does not react with acid. But strong acid and high temperature, please note, both has to be there. Acid has to be strong and the temperature has to be high. Then only it reacts. For example, boron reacts with nitric acid to forms. This is boric acid and this is aluminium. Right. Let's talk about the aluminium now. Aluminium dissolves in dilute sulfuric acid and dilute uh, hydrochloric acid actually and liberates dihydrogen. See the reaction? Aluminium, this is dilute. So this is also dilute, this is aqueous. It reacts to form, it reacts to form hydrogen gas. But if you give a concentrated acid now, it forms a productive layer. It forms a productive layer. So it forms Al2O3 protective layer and this layer helps in further reaction, correct? So please note the difference here. In concentrated, it doesn't react properly because it forms a layer, but in dilute, it reacts properly. It is as good as I have heard this uh, uh, story that if you keep a frog in a uh, water and if you heat slowly, right, the frog won't realize and the frog, frog will die. If you keep this frog in some water and heat this, the frog uh, won't realize and frog will die. But if you have a very high, uh, what do you call, hot water, and if you put a frog here, the frog will jump out immediately and it will survive. Same thing here, the sulfuric acid, sorry, the aluminium, it, it reacts with very, uh, what do you call, powerful acid, it immediately forms a coating and survives, right? But when it, when it reacts slowly with a Dilute acid, it is not even aware it is reacting, it's dying off and it dies off. Just a story to re relate, but uh, these are two different uh, things altogether. Just uh, seeing this behavior, the story came to my mind, so I thought let me share with you. So, if you have a frog, just put in the hot water, it jumps off, survives. Same thing, aluminium, put in the hot water that is my concentrated acid, it survives, it forms a coating. Frog, you know, put in the dilute, uh, what you call very normal water and warm the water slowly, it will die off. It won't realize the water is warming up. Same thing, aluminum, you put with dilute acid, slowly it corrodes and goes off. Let's talk about the reaction with base now. Here also we'll be focusing more on boron and aluminum only. So, as you have seen, boron doesn't react with uh, weak acid and uh, room temperature. Similarly, here also boron won't react with a uh, weak alkali at moderate temperature, but strong alkali, high temperature, it is attacked. For example, boron plus potassium hydroxide, the very strong base, it gives K2, K3, BO3. Right. And let's talk about the aluminium. Aluminium and gallium, they react. Gallium also we have talking about. Aluminium gallium reacts with aqueous alkali and liberates dihydrogen. Please note, here also we are using aqueous alkali and gives dihydrogen. That's why if you see aluminium is amphoteric, why? Because aluminium reacts with acid and base. Okay. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.